In this video, we'll cover the motion of charged particles in electric fields. So we'll, we'll discuss the acceleration uh, in a constant electric field and compare the motion of the particle uh, to projectile motion. So we know in a uniform electric field, uh, the force experienced by a charge is given by the formula F equals EQ. So being a vector equation, this implies if the charge is positive, the direction of the force is the same as the field. So it will be traveling in the direction of the field lines. If the charge is negative, uh, the charge will be traveling in the direction opposite the field lines. The equation also implies that if the field strength is constant, uh, so is the force. So using Newton's second law, um, a charge placed in the uniform field will experience acceleration if it is free to move. So we use the formula F equals EQ and F equals MA, and we can equate these. So force equals force, MA equals EQ, and we find our acceleration is proportional to the strength of the field, the charge, and inversely proportional to the mass of the charge. Because we have a uniform electric field, um, E is constant, and that means that A is constant. So if we can have a quick review of gravitational fields, and then we can compare them to electric fields. So for example, if we have a kicker um, kicking a ball, the gravity is always in the same direction with a constant magnitude. So in this case it would be down, constant magnitude of 1.81 meters per second squared. This force bringing the projectile back down is in a perpendicular direction to the horizontal motion. Um, so there is no effect on the ball in the horizontal motion, meaning the ball can continue in a constant velocity in the horizontal direction and not be affected. So comparing to an electric field, there is no force component in the horizontal direction that can affect the particle that's moving through the field. We've got the constant acceleration due to the uniform electric field that is always in the same direction. As acceleration is constant, we can use these equations. Uh, these are equations of motion that can be found on our formula sheet. Uh, this allows us to describe and determine the motion of a a particle in the electric field. So when we're asked to discuss motion of a particle in the electric field, there are two ways we can do this. Uh, it's either uh, using the equation of motion or concepts of energy. So in this example, we're going to go through first the kinematic or the motion approach. So initially we have to find the force on the proton. And in order to do that, we use the equation force equals EQ. But first we need to find what E is. And we can do that using this equation here. So once we've found E, we can find the force. Uh, once the force is found, we can find our acceleration. And our acceleration will be constant because our force is constant. And we can use our equation of motion here to determine the time it takes for the uh, particle to move between the two plates. So we just rearrange and solve for the value of T. Uh, to find the final velocity, uh, we can use this equation of motion. Uh, being that we've just found our uh, value of time here. Finally, we can find our kinetic energy using this formula. So you can see we've taken five steps to find our kinetic energy and our velocity. Now, if we go the energy approach, so often we're just uh, asked to find the velocity or the energy, uh, it can be a lot simpler. It's a shortcut. We can use uh, our other equation. So we know our change in potential energy is equal to Q delta V. And we can find our energy is here. So this is the same as the energy that we calculated uh, in the five steps previously. Now, once we've found our energy, we can substitute this back into our uh, kinetic motion equation to find our velocity. So we've really taken two steps uh, in the previous equation, which was five. So it is important to practice some of these questions uh, to save yourself time in exams. Um, as doing five steps may take a lot longer than uh, doing two steps when we just need to find one piece of information. So we can have an example um, such as this one in the diagram where we have a proton that enters a plate, enters a uniform field um, with initial velocity. We can compare this to um, a gravitational field where we throw a ball up in the air um, and the gravity or the force is acting in the opposite direction. So this is what we have here. Our positive test charge has a force acting on it that is down back towards this negative plate. So in this case, we can still use our equations of motion. However, it's just uh, we have an initial velocity. 
as with our equations of motion, we know our particle will change direction and uh, eventually come down, just as in this example here, where we have a final velocity here um, in the first part of the flight of zero meters a second. So a typical question will first find the electric field strength and the force on the particle. And we can equate the force on the particle with uh, Newton's second law. Uh, to find the acceleration. Uh, in stage two physics, the only thing that we need to calculate is the time of flight. So how long it takes to get from here to here for a particle. Um, and also the deflection, so this uh, S value here. So time taken uh, is the distance over velocity. And this is actually a simplified version of the range equation where acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero. Now, to find the deflection, uh, which is this S value, um, we have to find our acceleration. And then this is also a simplified version of the range equation where our initial velocity V0 is zero. So there's an example question here, which you can follow through, pause the video and follow through. Um, this final step, uh, step three, determines the final velocity of the particle, um, which is simply just a matter of combining the uh, velocity in the x direction and velocity in the y direction in a uh, vectorial form.